Item Number SCP-4414 Object Class Euclid Keter Special Containment Procedures Foundation web crawler Koxy.exe is to monitor all image hosting websites and replace all instances of SCP-4414 with the dummy image fingerfun.png. Any individuals performing SCP-4414-A are to be apprehended immediately and administered Class B amnestics. Foundation web crawler Valiha.exe is to monitor all websites capable of hosting images and videos, instances of SCP-4414 in any medium and instances of SCP-4414-A in photo or video are to be deleted immediately. Any individuals seen performing SCP-4414-A in these media are to be immediately located and taken into containment via Mobile Task Force Omicron-14 those able. All those who witness an instance of SCP-4414-A are to be held for a minimum of 30 days in standard humanoid containment chambers and monitored for symptoms. While contained, these individuals are to be kept in the following orientation at all times, even during sleep. Arms outstretched from the body at a 90 degree angle, T position. This position should be reinforced via body cast or standard foundation issue T restraints. Fingers separated from each other by acrylic supports between the intermediate phalanges. As of this document's most recent revision, there are zero known instances of SCP-4414 on the internet and no claims of individuals engaging in SCP-4414-A. Valia.exe is to run indefinitely to minimize exposure to SCP-4414. Description SCP-4414 is a PNG image that was posted to 4chan's B-board on June 5, 2018 at 4.50 UTC and quickly disseminated via other popular image sharing sites. The image's creator is currently unknown, despite ongoing Foundation efforts but is believed to reside in North America. If an individual views SCP-4414 or text directly referencing the object, there is an 80% chance that they will attempt to engage in SCP-4414-A, the act depicted in SCP-4414. This chance increases with repeated exposure, so long as each exposure lasts at least 10 seconds. As a result, all descriptions of SCP-4414 and similar images have been wiped from Foundation databases. While SCP-4414-A itself carries a similar cognitohazardous effect, textual descriptions of it do not. In textual descriptions, this effect is significantly diminished. SCP-4414-A is the act of picking and peeling at skin tags on one's fingers. While most cases of SCP-4414-A result in only superficial damage to the fingers, 25% of SCP-4414-induced cases result in an exposed individual peeling away skin until they remove a significant number of basal skin cells and self-terminate via uncontrollable blood loss. In SCP-4414-A-induced cases, the incidence of this increases to 95% of exposed individuals. More clearly, those viewing an individual engaging in SCP-4414-A have a 95% chance of doing it themselves. If an individual does not have any skin tags at the time of exposure, they will seek to create one by biting, clawing, or cutting at their fingertips. During the process, individuals will take extreme care to keep the strand of removed skin intact. Skin continues to grow and regenerate at a normal rate throughout SCP-4414-A. As a result, it can take weeks for an afflicted individual to self-terminate. Despite the trauma induced via SCP-4414-A, afflicted individuals will often describe the act as sensual, euphoric, or oddly satisfying. They will often moan or laugh while performing SCP-4414-A, attracting the attention of others in their vicinity. 
While afflicted, individuals retain some semblance of personality, but their urge to partake in SCP-4414-A seems to override it. See Addendum 4414.1. If an exposed individual is prevented from engaging in SCP-4414-A to their knowledge, they will become increasingly emotionally unstable, with foci of distress varying dramatically between cases. They often attempt self-termination or terminate through anomalous, while naturally plausible, means. See Addendum 4414.1 Interview 2. Viewing an instance of SCP-4414-A in person or through photo or video exposes an individual to its cognitohazardous effects. Considering the possibility of an uncontrollable chain reaction, MTF Omicron 14 is to consider locating and containing public instances top priority. The only individuals that are immune to SCP-4414 or SCP-4414-A's cognitohazardous effects are those who lack biological hands at the time of exposure. As a result, only MTF Omicron 14 Footnote 1. MTF Omicron 14 is comprised of individuals who have lost limbs during Foundation operations. They are often issued prosthetics or assigned remote weaponry to carry out operations most effectively. May be authorized to apprehend and terminate afflicted individuals. Addendum 4414.1. Interview Logs. On August 5, 2018, MTF Omicron 14 agents successfully apprehended and restrained 30 exposed individuals in a Los Angeles dance club. 25 of them self-terminated before the current restraint techniques were successfully implemented. The remaining were interviewed by SCP-4414 lead researcher Adam Hecht at Site-59 in the following days. Hecht lost both arms during a containment breach at Site-94, both of which were replaced with state-of-the-art prosthetics to allow him to continue his Foundation career at Site-59. Interview 1. Subject 4414-02 Forward. Subject 4414-02 was a 24-year-old male named Timothy. At the time of apprehension, he had removed 49 centimeters of skin, the removed strand wrapping around his left arm and ending at his elbow. Begin Log 1801, August 14th, 2018 I love Timothy. Can I call you Timothy? Yeah, better than being a number. Great. Do you know why you're here? Well, I know this isn't fucking legal. I wasn't even read my rights, you know that? Let me ask you something else. What made you do that to your left arm? Uh, I don't know. I saw Kelly doing it and figured, you know, why not? Hey, uh, is Kelly here now? I'm sorry, but I can't disclose that. Of course you can't. Can you elaborate on why you did that to your left arm? Well, I mean, I I don't know. It, it's just something I wanted to do, like, I don't know, like sex. I mean, not like, it wasn't like sexual or anything, just something I wanted to do. It felt... Fuck. It just made sense, okay? I understand, Timothy. Now... When are you gonna let me out? I'm sorry, Timothy. But we can't do that. There's no way to ensure you won't lapse into your previous self-destructive behavior. Look, I can't stay like this forever, you know? I'm not going to... Timothy. 4414-02's jaw starts violently opening and closing on his lips and the inside of his cheeks. Blood drains from the wounds as 4414-02 continues to chew at his own mouth. MTF Sigma-11 agents enter and attempt to restrain 4414-02 while Hecht exits the room. End Log 1805, August 14th, 2018
Afterward, 4414-02 dies of blood loss two minutes after the interview concludes. Hecht requests that sedatives be present in the room for all future interviews. Request is denied on August 15, 2018, but MTF guards are authorized to carry sedatives while positioned outside of the interview room. Interview 2, Subject 4414-04 Forward, Subject 4414-04 was a 22-year-old female named Isabella. At time of apprehension, she had removed 152 centimeters of skin, the removed strand wrapping her left arm and torso and ending below her navel. Begin Log, 1803, August 19th, 2018 Did removing your skin hurt you? Well, yeah. Is it not supposed to? No. I'm just wondering. What made you keep going despite the pain? It just seemed worth it. Like, I mean, I can't even describe it really. I'm sorry you can't feel it too. No. Don't worry about that. I really don't mind. I can't imagine what that would be like. God, I, I just... I'm so sorry. Let's change the subject, Isabella. Can you tell me exactly why you wanted to do this to yourself? Fuck. I'm so sorry. My, my friend Jenny started... started doing it. I, I just wanted to see. 4414-04 looks at her navel and starts heaving. Her body suddenly stiffens and her heaves become more rapid. I need some help in here. MTF Sigma 11-9 and Sigma 11-4 remove 4414-04 from her restraints. 4414-04 continues to shake violently and loses consciousness as she is carried to the medical ward. End Log, 1807, August 19th, 2018. Afterward, medical staff determined that 4414-04 suffered a massive seizure during the interview. After remaining unconscious for the following five days, 4414-04 is terminated. Interview 3, Subject 4414-21 Forward, Subject 4414-21 was a 21-year-old female named Caitlin. At time of apprehension, she had removed two centimeters of skin, the removed strand ending at the intermediate phalange of her left ring finger. Begin Log, 1802, August 21st, 2018. What made you start to be your skin off? I think it started with my friend Jenny. When we got to the bar and, you know, started drinking a bit, Jenny rolled up her sleeve and showed us this huge skin tag she'd removed. How did everyone react to that? I was disgusted, obviously. But everyone else just seemed fascinated. Jen kept telling us how good it felt, saying we should try it too. She got really persistent and started saying that it's the best thing you'll ever feel. And you tried it? Well, for like a second, then I realized how stupid it was. It's pretty much all healed, thankfully. And you don't feel any desire to keep doing it? No, absolutely not. Circling back to an earlier question, why did you start playing to begin with? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I was curious. Well, Caitlin, thank you for your time. I think we're done for now. And Log, 1808, August 21st, 2018. Afterward, 4414-21 is deemed safe to exit containment after 30 days and is released shortly thereafter. She and her immediate family are administered Class B amnestics and placed under temporary remote surveillance. Interview 4, Subject 4414-17. Forward, Subject 4414-17 was a 21-year-old male named Clark. At time of apprehension, he had removed 329 centimeters of skin, the removed strand wrapping around his left arm, torso, and left leg, ending at the lower thigh. 
Begin log, 1800, August 26, 2018. Clark, you've expressed multiple times to Chef here that you don't feel like you've taken enough skin off. I think what I've done so far is just kind of insufficient. Can we delve a little deeper into that? Maybe it's insecurity, I just feel like I could have done more, you know? It makes me... Regretful? No, not really. It's more... I'd almost say afraid. Like, what if I never got it all off? I know you guys cut off most of the tag, I guess, but it's not gone. That's the way they always work. No matter how close you cut, you never get it right. There's always that sliver you leave behind that it catches on your clothes or a towel or a back or something. And then it's back, just growing and growing, but never fucking ending. End Log, 1802, August 26, 2018. Afterward, shortly after 4414-17's final statement, 4414-17 begins twitching uncontrollably, prompting Hecht to immediately end the interview and order guards to sedate 4414-17. No further interviews have been scheduled. Interview 5, Subject 4414-09. Forward, Subject 4414-09 was a 23-year-old male named Joshua. At time of apprehension, he had removed 2,490 centimeters of skin, the removed strand wrapping around his entire body twice and ending at his sternum. Begin Log, 1803, September 2nd, 2018. What did you hope to accomplish by peeling your skin off? Joshua, please. I need you to work with us. I'm never leaving this place. I already know that. And as long as I'm here, I can't really finish the job either. Why would I want to talk? Think of it this way. The more of my questions you answer, the fewer people will find themselves here. Now, can you please answer the previous question- You never saw the picture, right? I already know no one besides Jenny and I saw it at the club, but I wasn't sure about you guys. No, I've seen it. In fact, I'm one of the only people here that has. I know you don't have any arms now, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say you weren't born like this. You're not wrong. You got skin tags as a kid then. Remember how fucking irritating they are? Of course I did. I don't think anyone hasn't. See, here's the thing. There's only one way to really, really get rid of a skin tag. I just never knew before. I envy the m photo. I really do. Gorgeous. Not because he had perfect skin, but because he had the determination to Just imagine, never ever again. That's all we need, Joshua. Thank you for your time. Well, I have all the fucking time in the world now, don't I? End Log, 1810, August 26, 2018. Afterward, shortly after the interview, Hecht requests 4414-09's termination under Foundation Ethics Code 4A098. Footnote 2. If the research or containment of a subject or D-class does not serve the Foundation's mission and said entity cannot be reintroduced to society after containment or service, said entity should be humanely terminated. See Foundation Ethics Codes. Request denied on September 9th, 2018. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. 
If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.